Emily, what is going on inside that head of yours? I have reached the limit of my patience with your behavior, and this situation is utterly astounding. I'm so sorry, Sarah. Can you please tell me what's wrong? Did I make another mistake that displeased you? Your apologies are nothing but hollow words without any sincerity, Emily. I demand that you leave this restaurant at once. You must relinquish your seat and never show your face here again. Do you understand? Your only option is to go straight home. But Sarah, I can't possibly leave right now. We came here to celebrate my daughter's birthday as a family, remember? And as her mother, it's my duty to take care of her. Why would you propose such a ridiculous thing? Allow me to elucidate why I brought this up. I've observed that you haven't been consuming much food lately. Your soup, for instance, is barely touched. And it's evident that your appetite has diminished. Staying here insults the chefs and demonstrates no gratitude for their culinary skills. We'll manage the rest of the dishes so you can leave now. Well, it's true that my appetite has declined, but that's because you've only permitted me to eat this soup. You ordered it on my behalf and won't let me choose anything else for myself. I wanted to inquire why you're doing this. There's nothing wrong with the soup, but I didn't ask for it. You might not fully comprehend the excellence of these amazing French dishes. The chefs want them to be enjoyed by those who can truly relish their artistry, like me. This is for the greater good, and I'm certain you'll realize it sooner or later. Sarah, you call this a gesture of kindness? Is this how you define it? I wanted to sample other dishes too, Sarah. I don't think our stomachs operate like this. This restaurant boasts three Michelin stars, my dear. It's improbable that someone like you with a more mundane background can truly appreciate it. I'm just concerned you might get ill if you eat anything other than the soup your stomach might not handle it well. I don't quite grasp your motive, Sarah. At first I was thrilled about going to this restaurant. I adore French food, and I hope this might be a day we could connect better. Let's not prolong this. Perhaps at some point in the far future, you'll have the chance to savor your first taste of French delicacies, though that might be many years from now. Until then, enjoy your soup and be thankful for it. I'm quite perplexed by your intentions. At first, when I heard you were taking us to this restaurant, I was overjoyed. You know how much I love French food, right? I was optimistic that perhaps this would be the day we could bond and connect better. This isn't about you. It's about our granddaughter's birthday. Your love for French cuisine is of no interest to me. Frankly, I question the authenticity of any French meals you claim to have eaten in the past. They likely were nothing more than cheap store-bought microwave dinners. Such disrespect. Finish your soup and leave. Why do you always treat me so cruelly? Today should be special. Could you try to be gentler just this once? I'm not cruel. If you feel I'm unjust, it's because you choose to see yourself as a victim. I said, I arranged this gathering so a little appreciation would be appreciated. This is exactly why I had doubts about inviting you. I had a hunch it would turn out to be a terrible decision. You didn't want me to be a part of my daughter's birthday celebration? Frankly, I never wanted you to be here. But I gave in because our dear Kendall begged me to. She's such a lovely girl. A world apart from her mother's shortcomings. This is precisely why I'm cautious about bringing outsiders into our family events. I thought I was being kind by including you, but it seems I was too generous. I should have left you at home when I had the chance. Know your place, Emily. You don't belong with us. Huh? Wait a minute. But I'm her mother, and I'm part of this family, even if you don't like me. Don't I have the right to celebrate my daughter's birthday like the rest of my family? It's unbelievable. 
Do you truly believe you're part of this family? Being my daughter-in-law doesn't give you that privilege. Honestly, I don't understand why I have to pay for your meal. You're fortunate that I'm feeling generous. I could see that I'm not wanted here. I'll leave as you wish. Very well then, and don't even think about coming back. I won't stay. I can't tolerate your behavior any longer. I'll go home, just as you'd like. I hope that pleases you. Mom, what's wrong? You've been in the bathroom for ages. Are you sick? Do you need me to call someone? No, I'm fine, honey. I just have a little cold, that's all. Nothing a good sleep won't cure. I'm going to go home now, but you stay here and have fun. It's your birthday and you deserve it. And don't forget to enjoy your food. It looks amazing. It's not every day that you get to eat at a fancy three-star French restaurant. Mom, please don't lie to me. It's Grandma, isn't it? She's the reason you're feeling awful, right? You don't have to act like everything is okay. I know. You do? Of course I do. We're sitting at the same table. I can see how Grandma treats you like dirt. She made you order soup and didn't even let you look at the menu. She won't let me share any of my food with you. She said you like soup, but we're at a fancy restaurant and you haven't even touched anything else. I know you're not happy. Ugh, honey, I'm so sorry. I didn't want you to notice. Well, I did, and I can't stand it. How come Dad and Grandpa just sit there and let her do this to you? She's being so mean to you, and they're acting like nothing is wrong. It's not fair. It makes me so angry, and I feel so powerless. I'm sorry you had to see this, sweetheart, especially on your special day. Don't be sorry, Mom. You didn't do anything wrong. I'm just worried about you. And I don't want to be here anymore. I don't want to eat with these people. I know, I didn't stand up for you at the restaurant, but can I go with you? But you were so looking forward to this, Kendall. Don't mind me. All I want is for you to have a good time. Eat for both of us. Okay, I will, for both of us. And I'll make her pay for what she did to you, literally. Just watch, Mom. She's going to regret this. That's my girl. There's the birthday girl. Don't let anything ruin your day. It's your time to shine. I'm going to order some caviar and truffles. Those are really expensive, right? Yes, they are. But make sure you also get some dishes you love. Expensive doesn't always mean better. I'm sure they have a lot of desserts. It's a top-notch restaurant after all. You can bet they'll be delicious. I'm sure you'll love them. Have them for me. You're right, Mom. I almost forgot about the desserts. I'm going to order every single one of them. Think of it as a gift from me to you. Thank you, honey. And don't forget to enjoy the food for yourself, too. It's your special day, and you only get this once per year. I'll go to my usual dinner and have a nice lunch there. Okay, Mom. I'll eat a lot. I'll show you how much a growing teenager can eat. See you soon. See you soon. And good luck, birthday girl. I must say, Emily, lunch was quite delightful. It was truly splendid. <laughs> Our sweet Kendall seemed to share the sentiment. Once you left, she started ordering dishes with a big smile on her face. It can be a bit challenging to enjoy your meal fully when there's someone unfamiliar at the table. Um, thank you for everything. Now looking at you in comparison, I'm rather glad you left. So what are you up to now? You must be getting hungry. Perhaps you're feeling a bit down or maybe even regretting your lack of exposure to different cultures. Actually, I'm having a delightful meal at the local diner. The local diner? That's nowhere near the experience of a three-star restaurant. Well, it may not be as fancy or famous, but I genuinely believe the food here is excellent. The restaurant owners are friendly. 
dining at a three-star restaurant is great, but a local diner is a more down-to-earth option. Naturally, that's how you'd see it. You probably cannot tell the difference between a top-notch three-star meal prepared by world-famous chefs and a regular dish made by a local cook. They probably all taste the same to you. I, on the other hand, could never bring myself to dine at such an inferior place. Um, that's just fine. I doubt the diner owners would want you as a customer either. They have plenty of loyal patrons to serve. What? How dare you? By the way, this diner is one of Kendall's favorite spots to eat. Please, let's not speak ill of it. And let's show respect to the owners. It's quite astonishing. You're taking Kendall to that awful place? Yes, we sometimes come here for lunch together. Her absolute favorite dish is macaroni and cheese. It's actually one of the most popular dishes they serve. I cannot fathom why you would subject poor Kendall to dining at such an unsophisticated establishment. If she ever expresses a desire to dine anywhere else in the future, please inform me immediately. I will take her to another top-notch three-star restaurant. Really? That's actually quite generous of you. Of course you won't be accompanying us. I'm only taking our precious Kendall along. I can't risk you spoiling our meal again. Yes, certainly, I understand. Only those who appreciate fine dining should enjoy this food. Those who don't understand like you shouldn't be here. After we pay for our meal, we're going shopping for Kendall's gift and you won't be a part of it. I see. Once again, thank you for looking after Kendall. Emily, I need you to bring $1,000 to the restaurant immediately. I can't pay for the meal and I can't leave. Can you bring the money, got it? Well, this is surprising. You don't have the money? I wonder how that happened. Did you happen to forget your wallet at home? Who do you think I am? I certainly didn't forget my wallet. The issue here is that the bill for our meal turned out to be much higher than we expected. It came to $1,500. Can you believe it? $1,500 for lunch? My goodness, you folks really went all out. What on earth did you order? I believe there must be some kind of mistake. $1,000 should have been more than enough to satisfy all four of us. I've been trying to explain this to them, but they simply won't listen. You do realize you were joining at a three-star French restaurant, right? So you think you know better than me, coming from a less sophisticated background? Let's stop talking and get that money. It's unbelievable. We only had a few dishes and drinks. This place might be exploiting its customers. I'm thinking of reporting it for investigation. Didn't you bother to check the menu for the prices beforehand? Emily, I've had enough of your sassy remarks. Just hurry up and come pay for the meal. If this continues, we might be mistaken for dining and dashers, and they could involve the police, which would harm our reputation. That sounds truly dreadful. Must have been quite a challenge. Wait a moment, I figured it out. It's you. Me? What about me? You sneaky troublemaker. You've been ordering extra food in secret, haven't you? You weren't satisfied with me treating you at the restaurant, and you went even further. I bet you got takeout after you left, and lots of it. That's the only way to explain it. Um, Sarah, I think you should calm down a bit. Your imagination seems to be running wild. I knew it. I just knew it. So you did this on purpose to get back at your mother-in-law, right? And that's why the bill is so high all because of you. You thought you could get away with it? Unbelievable. You even dare to call yourself a mother and a wife. Now we have to pay for a meal we didn't even eat. So bring me the money immediately. It's time to settle the bill and take responsibility for what you did. I hate to disappoint you, but I don't believe that restaurant offers takeout. Besides, I'm confident that if you review the bill, all the numbers will add up correctly. Well, if it's not you, then it must be the restaurant staff, right? They gave us a special wine bottle, claiming it was for a special occasion. I didn't check the price, but I'm certain they tricked us. It must have been the priciest bottle in the restaurant. Yes, that must be it. They offered you a bottle of wine? Hmm. 
Why don't you take a look at your bill? I don't need your suggestion, Emily, but I suppose I shall. This is outrageous. It's just one bottle. How can a single bottle of wine cost more than $900? It didn't even taste particularly special. It should be worth no more than $10 at most. This restaurant is running a scam. Hmm, that's strange. You said only cultured people who appreciate the food's value should eat. Their complaining about the price doesn't show you value it. You often complain a lot like it's second nature to you. What did you just say, young lady? Explain yourself. Sarah, there's no need for explanations. But here's the thing. You told me to respect the chefs at the restaurant. Yet, your current behavior seems even more disrespectful to the entire restaurant staff. You're making baseless accusations as we speak. How dare you insult me? Apologize immediately. You know what? No, I won't apologize. And as for the money you keep mentioning, you can forget about it. I'm not a part of your family, right? So I don't see any reason why I should rush to help you out. You enjoyed the meal and now you have to pay for it. I'm sure you can work out your issues with the rest of your family. What? This is unacceptable, Emily. Uh, would you look at that? My dessert just arrived. I don't want my meal to get spoiled, so please don't bother reaching out to me again. I wish you all the best. Mom, are you there? I'm almost home. How are you feeling? Are you still at that diner you like? I just got here, honey. I'm fine, don't worry. What about you? Did your grandmother finally pay the bill? No way. She's probably still at the restaurant fighting with the owner. It was a huge scene and I'm so glad I didn't listen to her. Dad and grandpa had no money on him, so they had to beg for some time to pay. I think grandpa is on his way back to get his wallet, but I'm not sure. I didn't stick around to see what happened. You left by yourself? Yeah, the owner was nice enough to let me go. They were really kind to me. I was worried sick about you, but I thought you'd be okay so, didn't, so you didn't call me. I'm so relieved you're safe. You can always trust me, Mom. They gave me a little box as a gift, even though they don't do takeout. It's a free dessert and it smells heavenly. They also told me to tell you that you shouldn't feel bad for standing up for yourself, even if it means going against your family. They said we should eat this together and celebrate my birthday properly. Really? It sounds like the restaurant staff knew something was wrong too. I wondered why your grandmother said the waiter offered her a bottle of wine that cost over $900. Maybe they were helping us with our plan. Maybe they were. Or maybe we just ordered a lot of expensive items. Who knows? I tried to ask one of the waiters if they knew what I was doing, but they just smiled and wished me a happy birthday. I guess we'll never know for sure. If they did it on purpose, I can't blame them. If I worked there, I wouldn't want to serve rude customers who are hurting their families. Especially on a special day like a birthday. We must have been a nightmare to serve. It must have been hard for them to watch. We should go back and thank them later, when things calm down. Yeah, Mom. Listen. If you want to divorce Dad, you should. You don't have to think about me anymore. I know this isn't the first time Grandma has treated you like this. I don't know everything but I hate seeing you upset. I want you to be happy, Mom. Oh, Kendall, do you really think that? I want to leave Dad and Grandma behind and live with you. Just the two of us. You can have full custody of me. And when I'm old enough, I will get a job and help you out. It might be hard, but it would be a lot better than this. So why don't you think about getting a divorce? Oh, sweetie, I'm so sorry. I'm such a terrible parent for making you go through all this. I'm so sorry. Don't apologize, Mom. You're not a terrible parent at all. You know who is? 
Dad, he didn't defend you at all today. If he's always like this, he doesn't deserve you. Maybe you're right. Maybe I need to see things more clearly. I will think about getting a divorce if you're really sure about it. I'm sure, Mom. I'm on my way home now, so we don't have to worry about him overhearing us. Okay. But are you sure you don't want to save the dessert for later? You might be too full after everything that happened at the restaurant. I'm actually okay. I'm not going to let that stop me from celebrating my birthday with the best mom in the world. You're so sweet. I'll be waiting for you at home. Okay, mom. Love you. How dare you, Emily? How could you be so selfish and heartless? You left us hanging in the lurch yesterday. You didn't contribute a single cent to the bill. I don't see why you're so surprised. I made it crystal clear what I was going to do. I told you, you can kiss my ass. I have no idea why you thought I would come back after the way you treated me. You insolent little witch. You almost got us arrested because of your stunt. Do you have any idea how humiliating it was for us? The damage you've done to our reputation. It was a three-star restaurant, for crying out loud. And you made us look like a bunch of clowns. I've been meaning to ask you this for a long time. But do you have some sort of mental problem, Sarah? You always accuse people of things they didn't do. You didn't go off on the restaurant owners like a mad woman, did you? I don't have a mental problem, but you do. We are paying customers, damn it. And they banned us just because you ran away without paying your share. Well, I don't think that's the only reason they banned you, to be honest. After all the trouble you've caused, you still can't bring yourself to apologize to me. You're unbearable. I can't stand having a daughter-in-law like you. I order you to divorce my son right now. Huh? What are you talking about? That's the price you have to pay for making me angry. If you don't want to divorce, then you have to beg for my forgiveness and pay for yesterday's meal. The whole $1,500. Do you understand? Nope. Not a chance. <laughs> you will beg me for mercy for putting me through such agony, and you will pay me back for every penny. I only had soup, and then I left. I don't mind paying for the soup, but why should I pay for everything else? Doesn't that sound a bit unfair? Oh, you don't want to pay, do you? Fine, it's your choice. It's either that or you get a divorce and lose us forever. Lose you guys forever, huh? Now you're getting scared, aren't you? Maybe you're starting to regret how you acted earlier. But I'll be generous. You still have a chance to make things right. If you want to avoid divorce and being kicked out of our house, then you have to do what I say. Apologize and pay me for the money from yesterday's lunch. Who am I kidding? I'll take the divorce. What? No, you're not supposed to take the divorce. I will make sure you never have to worry about her again. She told me she doesn't want to see you or your son ever again. I guess she doesn't want a nagging grandmother or a clueless father in her life. No, she didn't say that. Yes, she did. Anyway, it looks like we have a deal now. I'll let Ronald know everything, and we'll get the divorce done. But Emily, dear, you're not really thinking about getting a divorce, are you? Of course I am. But why? The alternative is paying $1,500 to you. Why wouldn't I? You have no idea how much I would pay just to get rid of you. But this is by far the best deal I've ever gotten. Thank you so much. No, wait a minute, dear. I was just being a little dramatic. I don't really want you to get a divorce. We're family after all. Is that so? Well, too bad, because I was dead serious. Goodbye, Sarah. It's nice knowing you. No way, Emily. Emily, you can't really be serious about the divorce. Don't ignore me, young lady. Explain yourself, Emily. Emily, I'll take you to as many three-starred restaurants as you want. Answer me right now, Emily.
Ronald and Sarah were adamant about not getting divorced, but when I brought in a lawyer to take care of the paperwork, they had no choice but to comply. They tried to keep it quiet, fearing it would ruin their reputation in society. However, it soon became clear that divorcing them was not enough to escape the drama. The scene at the restaurant that day had caught the eye of some curious bystanders who started recording the whole thing. One of those videos became a sensation on the internet. Their faces were identified by neighbors, and before long, gossip was flying all over the neighborhood. As the story spread, people found out about the real cause of our divorce and the horrible way Sarah had treated me. They became persona non grata at most restaurants, from humble eateries to fancy places. On the bright side, living together with Kendall as a single parent family turned out to be a wonderful adventure.